Hey guys, we're here at the Poland Film Festival 2020. Looking forward to it very much. Every year we have just a little kind of like intimate gathering of, of friends at the, the KTM dealership before we head up the street to, to watch the films. And Tom and I lead a little Q&A um, to give the, the, the folks who wanted to come out a little more insight into the filmmaking process and what you were kind of thinking and doing, um, and, uh, and so on. You guys can introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Dave Roper, and I'm the subject of Daniel's film, Motorcycle Man. I'm Daniel Lover, I'm the director of Motorcycle Man, uh, which is a film about Dave Roper, who's sitting right here. But uh, Also, uh, it's, it's a film about um, Dave's uh, career and life, but uh, really trying to tell the story in human terms, so it's really, uh, I hope accessible to people who aren't interested in motorcycle racing or motorcycles. It, and um, uh, it's, so it's about perseverance and what it takes to pursue your dreams and, uh, and some larger ideas uh, in addition to motorcycles. Uh, I do have a question. It is for Dave. <laughs> um, I was curious, uh, this is a bit nerdy, but what was the most uh, treacherous section of Isle of Man to you? And also, have you been on any other tracks or courses that you feel are more treacherous than the Isle of Man? No. <laughs> um, you know, the most treacherous portion depends on conditions. The conditions are always changing. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I've had incidents there. Um, uh, I've crashed there big time. And there could have been, things were very slightly different. I wouldn't be here talking to you. Um, um, uh, so I can't say any one portion is more treacherous than the other. Um, uh, maybe some of you have seen uh, Joey Dunlop's film, uh, Me for Victory. And, and, and he talks about how uh, he feels more, much more comfortable in the Glen Helen section, which is sort of closed in and covered over and, and feels uncomfortable on the open stretches of the mountain, which uh, I find curious, but... Uh, uh, the, the course has all sorts of different sections and they all have their appeal. And, um, uh, so I guess I can't say that one, one place seems more treacherous than another. It's more a matter of conditions. Uh, if it starts to rain in the middle of the race, things change. And, uh, Thank you. Can, um, in the in the film last night, uh, you just kind of mentioned in an offhand way, um, like you had decided to go race at the Isle of Man, and you you asked yourself, you know, if you wanted to do it each time, and the answer was yes until you didn't. And can you can you talk a little bit about that decision about uh, like when you're done with that? Well, in uh, 1993. I had a bad crash there. Uh, I was racing a 350 Benelli four-cylinder next Grand Prix racer um, in, the, in the classic Manx. And um, we made some changes on it after the practice and before the race, which probably isn't a good idea. And, uh, and it was going, it was flying, and I started getting ahead of myself. And anyway, my timing was off and um, I turned too late at Kira Moore uh, and ran wide to hit the bank on the right side, dislocating my right hip, ricocheting off. And the last thing I remember is the hay bale in front of the light pole. And the next thing I remember is being lifted into the helicopter. Um, so after that, I stayed away from the Isle of Man for, for uh, I guess about 10 years. And um, I, I, I was back once for uh, lap of honor, great lap ones, but, um, uh, and then in 2004, uh, someone approached me about riding there and ended up, I rode Team Obsolete Hard Matches there, and, um, but the bike was based in England and, um, prepared by somebody else, and we got there and some things weren't right, and, you know, I hadn't ridden there a lot recently, and, and more and more, some of the, the top guys in the classic class were also doing the modern bike racing at the TT. And um, so that race went all right. But um, uh, the next year I come back, and again, problems with the bike wasn't quite right. And uh, 
it was a really rough year at the LMN. Five very experienced, sober, respected classic racers died there. And, um, a couple of whom I knew uh, fairly well. And, um, and in the Thursday night practice, it rained before the practice started, but then stopped when we took off. And so there were places where it was parked wet and some places it was dry. And, um, and going into Windy Corner, I misjudged it was wetter than I was expecting. And I slid off fairly harmlessly into a gravel trap. Maybe 10 minutes later and a mile down the road, a guy went off the edge of the earth at the 32nd, was killed. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, I never thought I kidded myself about the risks there. And, um, uh, but I guess it did affect me. And, um, and, and the fact that it takes an incredible commitment there. And to, you don't want to do it half-ass. And we were doing it a bit half-ass. Trying to do it overseas, it's very difficult. Um, and, um, and so I decided I had some good runs there. I got away with it and I could live with it. And, and since then I've been fortunate enough to be invited back to do Lap of Honor and many times, and, uh, which is wonderful. And you get to, you go at your own pace and fast enough to be exciting, but you know, there's no pressure there. And, um, and keep that connection to this wonderful place and all these people. And, uh, so uh, I think I'm cured of needing a race. <laughs> <laughs> nice, thanks for sharing that. So I went to Lloyd Brothers in Hamilton, Scotland and bought a Mark IIA uh, oh. Commando Interstate yes. and rode it down to Liverpool and on the ferry over to the Isle of Man. Oh, amazing, and, yeah. I've got a Mark IIA. Do you? I do. Mine's not an interstate. It's just a road state. Yeah. Yeah. Ronnie's got a road state. I've got a road as well. As well yeah. 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 We love them. Yeah. We've got about 90 bikes in 90 norms in our club, just in this local area. It's uh -huh. amazing, actually. Yeah. And there are, uh, I guess the vast majority of twins, but any singles? Yeah. It, it could be I've really. Got a, yeah. I've got a yeah, single. Got a I've single. got a 48 ES2. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. But it should really be the Norton Commando Club. Because like 80% of all the bikes are not commandos because they're yeah. so easy and you know you keep up the modern traffic. And yeah. Everything. So yeah, it's wonderful. I I, uh, I raced an ES2 in Australia. Once. Oh really? Oh, oh. Uh, it wasn't an ES2 like yours, I'm sure. <laughs> it was killer, man. Yeah. yeah. I guess they there was a trials version that had an alloy top end and head and and so it was based on it, but you know totally reworked a yeah. uh, cylinder head and. Um, it was really fast. They're running on alcohol. They're, oh yeah, I bet. They're alcohol and uh, yeah. Wow, amazing. Is this your first time in Portland? No, I used to live in Seattle actually, okay. back in the 90s for yeah. about four years, and so I used to come down here occasionally, and um, I've been back a few times Good. since, but um, yeah, last time was 10 years ago, so it's been a while. Excellent. Yeah, it's yeah. nice to be back here. I'm... This is our night off, you know, in the cold, gloomy winter <laughs> yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It gives us something nice. Yeah, it's a great idea. It's, one, uh, it's wonderful that it's a benefit for the uh, home ride. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. It is. It's really yeah. an excellent vibe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's fun. All right, thank you guys. It's not an environment that a lot of these films ever get screened in, except for here. And the filmmakers, let's give them a huge hand, come on. Let's give them a huge hand. It's so great that, that all of you have decided to come here and, and share your work with us and to enjoy your work on that screen in this place which is very special to us and I know it's special to you to see your work here <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I think from us I hope that you feel that here that watching your film in this place which we're gonna do some more of um, that, that you feel our passion for the subject and uh, that we get you we get your jokes and we really really appreciate what you do so anyway thank you very much <laughs> So, so last night, if you were here there uh, and you watched Slow Ride Home, there was a very interesting haircut on display in Slow Ride Home. I don't know if you know what a cold sack is, um, but uh, but there are not one but two people in that film who received cold sack haircuts during the film. If you have a full head of hair, you get you get this part shaved like a Franciscan monk. You get that part shaved. So I challenge people on Facebook today. 
They have said like, hey, anybody who comes here with the cul-de-sac haircut tonight gets two tickets for next year. It apparently was not enough enticement. <laughs> no. So, uh, so, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to up the ante. And uh, if anybody here is willing to get a cul-de-sac haircut on stage at intermission, oh my God. you will receive two tickets to the Portland Motorcycle Film Festival for the rest of time. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, I'm, hey, 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 dude, I, I know the difference between a bald guy and not a bald guy. Right there. That guy's going to do it. What's his name? Keith, right behind you. What? Yes, you're going to do it. Okay, so at intermission... You're going to come up here, and we're going to give you a cul-de-sac haircut, and you will forevermore have two tickets to the Portland Motorcycle Film Festival. That's what we have to do. All right. That is, that is fantastic. Two legs, or two of you? All right, so maybe two of you. Okay, so at, at intermission, you come on up here, we're going to do two cul-de-sac haircuts. <laughs> And, and that's enough. Not the rest of you are like, hey, that two is, two is plenty. Oh, 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 that's a nice one of hair. That's a very nice one of hair. All right, here we go. That's all good. All right. How's it going? Is it all for you? Okay. This is all for good cause, everybody. And maybe you should say something. Let's just walk you. Let's see how this goes. Because maybe you should chat with you a little bit about how you feel. It is what you're supposed to have right now, too. All right. Do you want to get a little coaching? I don't know. That's a good one. Oh, oh yeah, we have to leave the Yeah. Let's see, we can take audience, audience choices, and we'll leave the top. Alright, I think you're all set. Alright, you're all set. Let's see, turn your name. Turn your Giving us this great audience. All right. 